Hello there, I'm Azara Tagaya and you're watching Ringgit Sense Plus, powered by Ringgit Plus. We kick off today's episode with a story on the National Insurance Scheme or My Salam. Ever since the Prime Minister launched the My Salam Insurance Scheme to help the lower income group about a month ago, there has been some concern and also criticism about how it would be managed. Now, many media reports have been highlighting how the 2 billion ringgit fund contributed by a private insurance company might be abused and how it could have been better utilized. However, we don't see much explanation on how it will actually benefit the 3.7 million lower income group recipients. Now we have much to find out about my salam. How does the claim process work? Who actually qualifies for it? And also, are there any medical exclusions? To answer our questions, we spoke to Tony Pua, the political secretary to the Minister of Finance. Here's a quick background on My Salam. It's a free Takaful critical illness health insurance scheme that covers the lower income group. Great Eastern Limited has offered the government 2 billion ringgit to get it started, and Great Eastern Takaful will also help administer My Salam. With this 2 billion ringgit, the government can now provide coverage for treating 36 critical illnesses such as cancer, heart attacks, and kidney failure at any government hospitals. They even cover acquired immunity deficiency syndrome, or AIDS, which many insurance companies do not cover. To qualify for My Salam, there are two criteria. First, you have to be a recipient of Bantuan Sarahidop, or BSH, and the second is that you have to be between the ages of 18 to 55. You don't have to register. You are automatically registered once you are a confirmed uh, Bantuan Sarahidop uh, Rakyat recipient. So if you have been receiving the uh, aid from the government, whether it's 800 ringgit, 1,000 ringgit, then you are an automatic uh, 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 beneficiary of the My Salam program and you'll be notified via SMS uh, from the 1st of March onwards. Upon diagnosis or the start of treatment, those who qualify will get a lump sum of 8,000 ringgit. This money then can be used for their treatment at government hospitals. If they are going for daily treatment, for example chemotherapy, they can also apply for a daily income replacement of 50 ringgit for each day of treatment up to a maximum amount of 700 ringgit a year. Once the claims are approved, patients will get the money deposited into their bank account accounts within seven days. So what happens essentially is uh, I walk into a hospital, I got diagnosed with lung cancer. What I would need is to actually obtain a medical report from the doctor certifying that I have lung cancer and I will be undergoing diagnose, uh, I'll be going undergoing treatment at this hospital and then that particular document will be submitted online after you scan the document, go online to mysalam.gov.my log in and you upload that image to be for the claim to be processed alternatively if you can't get online to scan the document to 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 to, to submit it uh, we are uh, put uh, the great eastern has provided offices around the country for you to submit physically and number three we will also have uh, selected hospitals uh, with such a facility to receive the claims from the patients the insurance coverage starts from 1st of January this year and you can start making your claim from the 1st of March this year. Unlike other critical illness insurance schemes, My Salam doesn't require a health checkup to check for pre-existing medical conditions. This leads to the question, does My Salam cover patients with pre-existing illnesses? For example, if a patient goes into a government hospital and has been diagnosed with stage 4 lung cancer last year, can he still make a claim? You are only paid when you are diagnosed. Okay, uh, So if you have a pre-existing known condition, you cannot be covered under insurance because it won't be insurance anymore. So unless he has already got a diagnosis, has been receiving treatment since stage 1 to stage 4, okay, then he doesn't qualify. But if he, well, I'm pain today, I come in and surprise, <gasps> I got stage 4, yes, you get 8,000 ringgit. 
Since the condition says upon diagnosis, it has led to questions if this can be exploited, probably to the benefit of the patient in our opinion. Say for example, if a patient had gone to a private hospital last year and has been receiving treatment there for cancer, they can always walk into a government hospital from 1st January onwards and ask for a new diagnosis and then make a claim to my salam. The private hospital and the patient is not obligated to share their previous health records with my sala. Now, don't ask, don't tell, in our opinion. What about those who have already bought their insurance? Can they use it to top up their my salam coverage? It's not a top up, it's two different plans which are mutually exclusive. Which means that if you have a plan with Prudential, uh, a critical illness plan that pays out 20,000, you collect your 20,000. And for my salam, you will collect your 8,000 ringgit. There has been much criticism on the my salam payout. Some are saying it is too small of an amount. Some others are questioning why it only covers those aged 18 to 55. With only 2 billion ringgit, the fund can only cover so many people. In our view, it's better than no coverage at all. Currently, the 2 billion ringgit that has been contributed by Great Eastern uh, will last us for at least 5 years. Uh, and we expect over the next few years, more funds will come in. And uh, over the next few years, we hope to be able to stretch the funds to 10 years. So, 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 so it's an ongoing process. We don't need to have 10 years worth of funds today before we start the program. We have enough for five years. We kick it off first and we will continue to top up the funds over time. For more information about My Salam, visit their website where you can go through their frequently asked questions. Well, we hope that story has helped to clear up some concerns about the My Salam insurance scheme. Well, here at Ringgit Sense Plus, one tip we can give you, the viewers, is to purchase your own critical illness insurance when you find that you can afford it. After the break, we speak to Bruce Tam, head of financial advisory channel at Ringgit Plus, and he will be giving us tips on how to pick the right critical illness plan for you. In the meantime, if you want to share what you just watched, go to our Facebook page and you can find today's story and many other personal finance stories. See you shortly. Back on Ringgit Sense Plus with me, Azara Tagaya. Now, if you've just joined us, uh, we were talking about the My Salam Critical Illness Insurance Scheme for the lower income group. And if you watched our previous story, um, some of you might think that its lump sum payout of 8,000 Ringgit for treatment is not very much. And you're right, because it isn't. So that's why it is encouraged that you get your own critical illness insurance coverage when you can afford it. Now, we have with us today Bruce Tum, Head of Financial Advisory Channel at Ringgit Plus to explain to us about critical illness insurance. Hi Bruce, thank you so much for joining us on Ringgit Sense Plus today. Hi Zara, thank you for having me. Well, um, we're talking about uh, insurance coverage. So one of the main things that we want to know is, um, can you explain to us the difference between uh, having a medical card and also having critical illness coverage? Okay, a medical card basically is... Um it's also called, it's what is also called uh, hospitaliz um, a hospitalization and surgical coverage mm. uh, for that, uh, for the, uh, and it's intended for that very purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's only for uh, a coverage in the event that hospitalization and, sur uh, and surgery is required. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, is that uh, what it, uh, a holder of a medical card will get access to uh, hospitals, mm -hmm. be it... Uh, be it a uh, private or or um, or a government hospital, okay, uh, and uh, and the expenses incurred throughout the stay and also the follow up after uh, being discharged are covered. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, what happens is that uh, the insurance company will pay directly to the hospital itself, and um, no money is uh, no money goes to. Uh, the policyholder itself. I see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, mm -hmm. uh, a critical illness cover is um, or also sometimes called dread disease, dread disease cover. Um, what it does is it pays a lump sum amount mm -hmm. to uh, the policyholder. So, so think of it as uh, 
a life insurance cover. If something happens, a lump sum will be given to uh, the policyholder. Mm. It's the same thing. Uh, in the event this per, uh, the policyholder is diagnosed with one of the 36 critical illness, mm -hmm. um, the lump sum will be paid, and this lump sum um, can be used for any purposes at all. So um, the way to claim it is basically to uh, to get a diagnosis from the doctor, mm -hmm. give it to the insurance company, and uh, the insurance company will pay directly into the account of the policyholder. I see. Uh, can you explain more on that? How can the claim process actually work for a consumer, someone who doesn't know how to do this? Uh, let's say you're diagnosed with um, cancer, maybe lung cancer. So how does the whole claim process work from beginning to end? Oh, it's very simple because uh, every insurance company will have a procedure mm. uh, uh, on, uh, on claim handling. What happens is uh, if uh, a person is diagnosed, mm -hmm. um, they will have to just contact the insurance company. The insurance company will give a set of documents mm -hmm. uh, where um, the, uh, the policyholder will fill up, mm -hmm. uh, get, a, uh, get a report, a written report from the doctor confirming that, this, uh, that they have that particular disease or illness, mm -hmm. give the same report together with whatever filled up forms to the insurance company, the insurance company will, help, will handle the rest. I see. How yes. long would the whole process take? Likely, it will take probably about two to four weeks if mm. it's a simple case, mm -hmm. right? If it's a simple case, if that doesn't require any um, any investigation mm. on the part of the insurance company, mm -hmm. um, but it may drag on longer if um, if there are certain details or information that is not uh, obtained. Okay. Yes. Okay, so um, consumers are often confused about um, what actually happens when they apply for insurance, especially those who don't have much experience. So can you tell us about what um, the insurance companies would usually ask consumers when applying? What are some of the questions that we have to prepare for? Okay, typically when you apply for an insurance, uh, for an insurance cover, mm. um, usually uh, the, the normal questions will be height and weight. Yeah, high, uh, things like height and weight, and uh, and also the changes within the, the, the last year, the changes in weight, mm. yeah, probably, right. Uh, it's also um, we are also ask lifestyle, mm. right, whether the person smokes, the person drinks, yep, and then um, also things like pre-existing conditions. Mm. Pre-existing com conditions mean um, that if a person already has a certain condition mm. um, during at the time of application, for example. Um, um, uh, chest pain, mm. for example, uh, 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 cancer, right? Um, the insurance company would want to know. Mm. At the same time, family history is also very important because, because uh, they will ask whether or not your, your parents, your siblings had any form of mm. um, diabetes, cancer and things like that, mm. right? Uh, last but not least, um, uh, whether you have had instances whereby your applications to any insurance companies mm -hmm. have been um, has experienced any loading. Mm -hmm. uh, loading means that uh, you have to pay higher premiums for it, or exclusions. Exclusion means that any of the coverage is excluded from your cover, mm -hmm. or it's been declined. Decline means that it's outright rejected. Mm. So uh, this will help the insurance company evaluate as to whether um, there's a, a risk, a particular risk is mm. involved on giving you that cover. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Bruce, for sharing with us today. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this segment. Thank you so much, and hopefully we can see you again next time. Thanks, Azira. Thank you. Well, that was Bruce Tam, head of financial advisory channel at Ringgit Plus, explaining to us a little bit about critical illness insurance. Now we'll be back after the break with more on Ringgit Sense Plus. Don't go away. Still with me, Azaria Tagaya on Ringgit Cents Plus. Now, in one of our previous episodes, we looked at how the no smoking rule at restaurants have helped some smokers save money by cutting down on the number of cigarettes they smoke. Now, if you're a smoker or are affected by secondhand smoke, pay attention to the next story. We spoke to two doctors from a private hospital about the two biggest illnesses that plague smokers heart disease and lung cancer. How much will treatment at a private hospital cost? Will you be able to afford it 
without insurance. Now, we're going to start off by saying we're not here to discourage you from smoking, but if smoking is a choice you want to make, then you should be prepared for the consequences. We visited Sunway Medical Center and spoke to two doctors there that treat many smokers. Dr. Kao Ken Seong is an expert in respiratory medicine, and he sees smokers who come to him with late-stage lung cancer. Late detection of uh, lung cancer uh, leading to you know delayed diagnosis and uh, at one stage at which you diagnose lung cancer the survival uh, and or prognosis is actually very poor all right not many survive beyond five years uh, and i would say that um, despite recent advancement in the treatment of lung cancer you know with targeted therapy with immunotherapy uh, we improve uh, chemotherapy, improve second-line chemotherapy. Although they have um, improved the uh, progression-free survival, I mean the overall survival is still dismal. Uh. I mean at five years you're looking at maybe uh, between 20 to 25 percent uh, overall survival. Dr. Kao says many patients come to him with stage 3 and 4 lung cancer because they don't show any symptoms when the cancer is still at an early stage. So if you're a heavy smoker or exposed to a lot of secondhand smoke or have a family history of lung cancer, speak to your doctor about getting tested. He adds that once a patient is diagnosed with lung cancer, one of the first few questions that is asked is the cost of treatment. Newer treatments, like immunotherapy, which uses the body's own immune system to fight cancer, can be costly. The cost of this new treatment can be um, uh, beyond the reach of most average Malaysian. So you're talking about um, maybe between 50,000 to 100,000 annually for the treatment of uh, lung, advanced lung cancer if you're taking targeted therapy. If you're taking immunotherapy, you're talking about maybe three quarter of a million over a course of two years, right? And uh, this is not including the cost uh, that you would um, entail from uh, the frequent uh, clinic visits, the uh, tests that one does, you know, for instance, a blood tests, uh, radiological tests like CT scans and PET scans. They are not cheap either. So the financial implication is um, something that is uh, uh, quite obvious that um, most people would be, uh, you know, thinking about the moment, you know, the diagnosis of advanced lung cancer is given to them. Even if you do detect lung cancer early, the surgery cost to remove the tumour at a private hospital is expensive. Dr. Anand Sachit Anandan is a cardiothoracic surgeon and operates on patients with early stage lung cancer, stage 1 and stage 2, which sometimes requires removal of parts of the lung, a lobectomy. We take a typical case of someone coming in for elective lung cancer surgery and undergoes a lobectomy. In the absence of any major complication, again, you're looking at about a five to seven day hospital stay and a total hospitalization cost maybe around 35 to 45,000 ringgit. Dr. Anan adds that he also treats many smokers that require heart surgery. Typically, uh, in terms of costs, if we have an elective procedure, so most commonly we would perform a triple or quadruple bypass. But again, it depends very much on each individual patient, where the narrowings are, where the blockages are. But if we, make, uh, uh, if we base it on, for example, a typical patient who has a triple vessel disease and they need three or four bypass grafts, then uh, an estimated cost could range anywhere from 50 to 70,000 ringgit. That would be the total hospitalization cost from admission till discharge, which is typically about a week's duration in hospital. And that includes approximately about two or three days in the ICU. And this would be uh, in the absence of any major uh, complication. Patients who find that they do not have the right insurance coverage or the finances to pay for treatment at private hospitals have an added stress as they worry about where they will get the money for their treatment. If there is an issue of someone who has insufficient insurance coverage or they are financially uh, constrained, then part of our duty is to ensure that that patient is referred on to a public facility, a government hospital, university hospital, so they can get the necessary treatment. Um, but we don't get involved in the financial planning per se. Our duty as clinicians is just to focus on the, uh, 
the clinical, the medical aspects of the disease. This is why critical illness insurance is so important, because the treatment cost at private hospitals is beyond what Malaysians can afford if they had to pay out of their own pocket. Most major insurance companies actually would cover treatment for all the uh, uh, critical illness that I mentioned earlier on that is uh, related to cigarette smoking. Uh, with the caveat that uh, uh, some of this treatment may require uh, certain information from the patient as well as their treating physician, uh, which means that they have to write in earlier on and then they get approval from the insurance company uh, before you know, they can get their money reimbursed. So uh, in certain situations, despite the fact that uh, they may need the treatment quite urgently, uh, these patients may have to actually pay out of pocket first and uh, eventually submit their reports uh, from their, their, their physicians and so on and get the approval of the insurance company. So it requires quite a fair bit of uh, uh, process there. Right? So it's not always that simple, all right? uh, but uh, to answer your question, yes, most of this uh, treatment uh, for the critical illness related to cigarette smoking are covered by insurance company. The two doctors we spoke to says it's a personal choice if someone wants to continue smoking, but they discourage it as much as they can. It's an individual choice, but um, there's no health benefits. And, and financially, as we know, it's also a very expensive habit as well. So sometimes we, any opportunity when we see a patient, we try to um, just advocate and gently counsel. Not preach, but just you know, gently counsel them against the, the hazards and perils of smoking. If you are going to continue smoking, get your affairs in order. Get critical illness insurance and life insurance to cover your family. Make sure your children also have medical insurance as secondhand smoke is going to make them fall sick more often. You live with the choices you make just to make sure you're prepared for its consequences. Well, we hope this episode about insurance and why you need it will make you take action. Next week, we take a look at the job market. What are the most sought-after skills employers are looking for these days? If you're thinking of switching jobs or moving up the career ladder, we have tips for you. In the meantime, improve your personal finance knowledge by watching previous stories we've done on our Facebook and YouTube. If you have a comment you want to make, get in touch with us on our Facebook page. I'm Azara Tagaya. Remember to invest and save wisely, and we'll see you next time.